G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and this video is about hatching out quail eggs and putting those quail chicks in the brooder. Now I didn't want this to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to incubate quail or anything like that. This is just how I do it with a few tips thrown in along the way. So I hope you enjoy the video. Well it's a terribly hot day today and I've been battling this incubator here in my shed it's gone up to 39 degrees I heard the alarm going off it's about one o'clock in the afternoon amazingly I've got some quail hatching out which is really amazing I'm not sure how many I'm going to get out of this batch because um, the, the heat has just been ridiculous and I just have tr a lot of trouble trying to keep this incubator cool or at 37.5 degrees C you know so I thought all those eggs would die for sure but looks like we've got um, some resilient quail hatching out which is fantastic news but I've got to have to watch this now constantly to make sure they don't overheat so that's why I've taken the lid off this and uh, just air it out a little bit and let it drop down. I can't take these guys out but just yet. It's just way too early. I've got to let them dry out and then I can transfer them to the breeder. Well, that's my quail brooder set up and ready to go. Doesn't take much. My upright brooder, I'll give you a closer look at it. All right, the first thing I do is make sure my thermostat's on and working. So I've got that on. I'm checking the temperature. At the moment, it's 43 degrees right underneath that lamp. And uh, it doesn't feel that hot, actually. But that's with this sender unit sitting right there. And I know that just underneath that spot is a nice warm spot. The quail, even though they've just hatched out, they might not all just gather underneath here. Uh, they actually will want to go in and out of the hot and cold, just like they would underneath their mother. So I have a separate compartment so that they can get away from the heat. And this would be substantially cooler over this side or in these corners. If it starts to get too hot, I just simply turn this off. I mean, if we get like 40 degrees uh, here, which is quite possible, I just turn all this off and, uh, and then at night, then I'll turn it back on. But I like these heat lamps. This is a ceramic heat lamp. It's, uh, this is what I've evolved into. It's better than the light bulbs, even though these light bulbs are a, um, a blue color so that they don't affect the sleeping pattern of the quail uh, it's still they still take a bit more energy and I do have a dimmer switch that I can turn these up and down to regulate the heat this is my fallback if in case it gets too cold but usually this setup is more for a cooler time of the year I've got a food container here I uh, initially blend it up because even though this quail feed here is meant for hatching out chicks it's actually what I've found in the past is the granules some of them are too big and the quail don't eat it very well and uh, so to encourage them to eat I ground it up a little bit more so we've got a little thing of feed a bit of water I make sure that it's proof that they can't run out and fly out or get stuck. I've got a grate so that the manure can fall through. I've got a couple of cardboard pieces that I'll keep changing out uh, that they can 
lie on if they want just for comfortability and uh, yeah underneath here is the manure catchment that I can replace every now and again throw that straight into the garden really good manure really good for the veggie patch and I'll probably only need the top level for now it's just all my other spare stuff so I guess we can go get the uh, quail now all right, these guys started hatching out yesterday and uh, I'm not going to leave them in another day, especially those ones that have hatched out early. You can see them through there. So I'm going to get them out and then any stragglers, uh, I'll just leave for another couple of days and hope that they hatch out. Like I've said, it's been a real struggle keeping the temperature exact. At the moment it is exactly right, 37.5. But probably midday today, it'll get really hot again in here and I'll have to remove the lid, try to cool these down as much as possible. But for now, let's get them out. They've, they've dried out, many of them. There's a couple of new hatchings possibly, but most of them have dried out, and I'm gonna quickly take them out and transport them over into the brooder. Four. Five, six, seven, I think. 21, I'll check their health out once I've got them all in. You gotta check, see how they're walking. So that's about 21 or something, gotta say. Okay, we'll leave these eggs in here. We'll put, um, yeah, put the lid back on for now. And we'll transport them back over to the brooder. At this point, I'm checking to see if any of them are deformed or have splayed legs, can't walk, those type of things. Um, and a quick look over, look okay, but we'll find out later, later as they go. I've got them underneath this cooler area, the bullnose of our veranda. This is out the back here, next to our bit of a um, sort of shade garden. So it's, it's fairly cool here, especially at this time of year needs to be. Okay. This one here, not looking the best. Bit of a runt, but we'll see how he goes. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just a new hatch, newly hatched. So I'll put him here underneath that heat lamp, and that fella can go now. I know how warm it is in there, I know that's working. I'll put up that, that up there so I can just tell the sort of temperature around the middle there, and uh. We'll let them find their own way around. And uh, also what I do, is I grab a bit of feed typically, and I'll put it on the cardboard and tap, just like their mother, and uh, teach them to start scratching around and eating. And that helps. They'll find their own way around, they'll find the water. You, you know, some people say you can try to teach quail how to drink and eat, generally I don't. I just watch and make sure they do. If they're not drinking out of this, I'll put a smaller container in here with some marbles in it. Um, but generally they catch on pretty quick. One, one finds out and one shows the others how to eat and drink and then they're laughing. And now I can watch their behavior on and off to see if this condition, the conditions here are good enough for them. If they start to group up really huddled in the middle and pile on top of each other, I know it's too cold in here, I need to up the, up the heat. If they're all spread out and uh, panting, I know it's too hot and I need to turn it down. That's the way I look at it. And so that's uh, day one straight out of the brooder. So what I'll do now is monitor the temps, monitor them, 
just off and on, you know, I'm not going to be too obsessed about it. I've done this quite a lot of times and uh, I'll keep checking that incubator, make sure it doesn't overheat. But I'm really surprised after having the alarm go off several times, 40 degree heat in that shed or the incubator went up to 40 plus that we've got a hatch out at all. It look, this looks like that 21, probably a 60% hatch rate, maybe 70. So I'm quite amazed and I'm really happy with that type of hatch rate. Well, it's been five minutes and they, they seem to be settling in very well. They're very active. Looking for things. They're pecking at their food. Playing sleeping, doing things that normal chicks should be. I can't see any deformities in any of them. They all look very healthy. And there you go. That's how I incubate quail eggs and put them in the brooder once they've hatched out. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions, whack them below. Don't forget the blog selfsufficientme.com. Bye for now.